Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the electric guitar tutorial for Let the Praises Ring, the live version. Let's jump right into it. So this song is in the key of E and at the beginning of the song we have a drum intro and then Lincoln comes in with the open E string. And then to finish off that drum section, he plays two harmonics both on the 12th fret B and E string. And then after that, you're gonna rake pick transition into the full band intro. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna break that down. So it's just the low E string. And then to play a harmonic, you just hover over the 12th fret, B and E string. And then a rake pick is just, you're literally hovering your hand over the strings and doing like a down up. And then you're like right into that intro part. Something like that. So today I'm gonna to be playing through my Helix and I created a Lincoln Brewster inspired patch it's just a general patch to play pretty much any of his songs, and that's going to be available for the Line 6 Helix, HX Stomp, PodGo, and HX HXFX. So if you have any of those units, feel free to click the link down below and get the patch for yourself. So the intro lead line is using all octaves on the A and the G string, starting on the 7th fret A string. Make sure you get that open B and E string to ring out during that whole section. Here's what that sounds like. And then you repeat that part. So here's the fret number starting on the seventh fret A string. It goes seventh fret to the ninth fret. I'll maintain that same shape to the 11th fret, down to the 6th fret, A string, and then 6, 7, 9, 7. And then after that, it goes 7th fret, 9th fret, 11th fret, just like the first time but then jump to the 14th fret, A string, and then back down to the 9th fret. And then finally, you're gonna end playing the 12th fret, 11th fret, and then resolving to the 7th fret. Here's what that sounds like in context. I'll play it again. Okay, so we made it to the verses, and in the first half of the verse, the guitar is completely out, but then Lincoln comes in the second half of the verse, and it sounds like this. So you're going to be playing this part with a palm-muted strumming technique, starting with your ring finger on the 7th fret A string and your middle finger on the 6th fret D string. And then you're going to be going back and forth between the 6th fret and 7th fret D string and you're going to be adding your pinky. Basically, to put it in music theory terms, you're going to be going back and forth between your E chord and your E sus chord. And then I'm going to play it slow for you. hammering on with your pinky but and also make sure to keep your low E string open as well okay so now we're into the chorus and this is what that guitar part sounds like
that was the whole uh, chord progression for the chorus. So the chorus chord progression has a pickup chord, and that's your B chord to your C sharp minor chord. So we're going to be playing every single chord in this chord progression with an open B and E string. So your B and your C sharp minor chord are going to be the exact same chord shape, and your B chord starts off with your first finger on the second fret A string, your ring finger on the fourth fret D string, and your pinky on the fourth fret G string. With again, your B and high E string open. Then just take that same shape and slide it up two frets, starting on the fourth fret A string. Then you're gonna play your A2 chord, which is just your standard A major chord, but with your B string open. Then you're gonna finish that passage by playing a standard E chord. That's your middle finger on the second fret A string, your ring finger on the second fret D string, and your first finger on the first fret G string. And then all of your other strings are open. Then you're going to create an E sus chord by adding your pinky to the second fret G string. And then there's a really specific picking pattern there. I'm gonna play that for you slowly. So you're gonna be hammering on your pinky to your second fret, doing an upstroke and then a downstroke on your E major chord. Okay, so the progression starts over. However, the third time you're gonna be playing some octave accents that sounds like this. I'll play that again. So this is gonna be your first finger on the sixth fret A string and your pinky on the eighth fret G string. And it's gonna be kind of the same, it's the same octaves as your intro. And then you're gonna move that shape up one fret. Make sure to keep your high B and E string open and then you're back to your A2 chord really fast. So then the final chords of the progression start off the same and each chord will get one measure. It goes B to C sharp minor, back to B, and then finally to your A2 chord. And then your last chord is your B chord. And then on that last B chord, make sure to choke the chord and then you're back into the intro progression. So now we've made it to the second verse and it's immediately more driving than the first verse. You're back in again with the palm muting technique. Now there's one part in the live version where Lincoln does a series of harmonics and it's really more of a general lick and there's nothing super specific besides that you are hovering your finger over the high E and B string starting on the 12th fret. I will tell you this, it's safe to land your ending of that lick on the 12th fret or the 5th fret or the 7th fret. So I'm literally just hovering my fingers over. So then after the second verse, you're gonna go back into the chorus and then you're gonna drop out for a drum solo. And then after the drum solo, it's your turn and then I'm gonna play that for you here. So this entire solo is all on the high E string and it kind of has like a little bit of like an Irish feel. 
So this solo is all on the high E string and think about each phrase in clusters followed by an open E string. So the first cluster starts on the 12th fret with your ring finger down to the 11th fret, middle finger and back to the 12th fret. Make sure that you're using alternate picking throughout this entire solo so that your picking is nice and even. And you might want to start and focus on that first cluster if you're going to start, if you're kind of struggling with your picking hand, just focus on that first cluster and really focus on how you're picking everything. So the second cluster is your ring finger on the seventh fret, down to the fifth fret, and back to the seventh fret again. Then move that pattern up two frets to the ninth fret, and then down to the fifth fret with your middle finger, down to the fourth, it's only a half step. Then ring finger back to the seventh and fifth, down to the fourth fret, and then now play your fifth fret and fourth fret with your ring finger and middle finger this time. And then bounce back and forth with your first finger on the second fret and open E string. So I'm going to play that entire uh, section slowly. So now here we're going to work our way up the neck. It's going to be 4-2-4, four, four, open, 5-4-5, five, five, open, 7-5-7, seven, seven, open, and then finally 9-7-9, nine, seven, nine, open. And then we're going to start descending again. That's going to be 12, open. Seven, open, with your first finger. Nine, open. Five, open. Seven, open. Four, open, and then back to seven. I'm gonna play that a little faster here. I'm gonna play that again. And then you're back to looping to the beginning of that solo. So we're at the halfway point of the solo. And then the beginning of the second half is the same as the very beginning. And then after that, the ascending line is picked differently. So I'm using all downstrokes and the notes are played as pull-offs to the open E string. So it's the same frets. However, the picking is slightly different. It's going to be that those pull-offs, and then another pluck of the open E string. So it's going to be. So then finally, we're going to cap off the solo with some single note pull-offs, and it's going to be the same idea as down here. So it's going to be. So we're starting on the 12th and then an open pull off. And then 14th fret, 16th fret, and then a quick 17th fret, and then back down to the 14th fret, and then finishing on the 16th fret. So then after that, you're back into the chorus, and then after the chorus, there's gonna be that final outro. Now, I'm going to go over the trash can ending, and this ending is going to be all octaves, starting on the A string seventh fret and the G string ninth fret. So it's gonna be all alternate picking. Make sure to get your B and high E string open. And then I'm gonna play that for you real quick, so that you get a context of what I'm teaching you. So 
that's the first half of it. So you're going to start in the seventh fret, then move that shape up two frets to the ninth fret, and then move it again up to the eleventh fret, and then the twelfth fret, and then another two frets to the fourteenth fret. Then make a huge jump to the 19th fret A string. And then make sure you're doing really fast alternate picking. Then from that high point, you're going to do a descending line. That's going to sound like this. Over that slowly. So you're starting with the 19th fret, and then you're going to drop down to the 16th fret, and then up to the 18th fret, down to the 14th fret, back to the 16th fret, then down to the 12th fret, and then to the 14th fret, down to the 11th fret, back to the 12th, down to the 9th. And then finally finishing that off on the 11th fret, you could do a slide there. Actually, a lot of this part is slides. So it's kind of like a down up, down up motion as well. Then after that, you're going to hit a final E chord at the end of the song. And then finally, you are concluded at the end of the song. So I want to play that for you in context. Well, thanks guys for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please do hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video.